Hi, Dr. Sam here, helping you get closer to your best skin day ever. Now, it's January, so that means it's harder than usual to get to your best skin day ever. And all I've seen since I've gone back to work are people complaining of dull, bumpy skin, and particularly so for those who are prone to acne. It's a time of year where a flare is almost inevitable. You have a, a diet rich in naughty carbs, in alcohol, in dairy, I mean, cheese, my goodness. Um, it's a time when the social schedule's a bit hectic, so maybe you haven't been as diligent about your nighttime routine, you've skipped a few nights of your retinoid, or maybe you've gotten a bit dry because it's winter and you've skipped a few nights of retinoid therapy. Anyway, lots of reasons why your acne may have gotten out of control. And when it's out of control, you're vulnerable. You tend to cling to information that you might otherwise question. Um, so I thought today I would highlight some of the danger things that I've been hearing people have been trying to control their acne, whether in practice or on social, um, and help steer you in the right direction for getting control with your skin back again. So don't, number one, please, please, please do not squeeze your spots. I see lots of articles online about if you're going to squeeze, this is the right way to squeeze. I simply say, never do it, people. Squeezing leads to more pigmentation and increases the risk of scarring as you potentially drive inflammation deeper into the dermis, the part of the skin that leads to scarring. It's just not worth it. Treat it correctly with something anti-inflammatory like benzoyl peroxide or one to 2% salicylic acid. Leave it be, dermablend that, forget about it, and then if it's down here, distract by doing something different up here. Put your hair up, work a cat liner, do something that distracts air away from the part of your face that you're most insecure about, and then forget about it. Don't, number two, don't fall into the long wear makeup trap. This is such a common and understandable quick fix. The idea of makeup that won't budge for 24 hours, 36 hours, whatever they're claiming nowadays, um, it creates a security blanket, doesn't it? However, that short-term fix can lead to a long-term downward spiral for your skin. These products tend to be highly occlusive, which means they'll trigger clogging and more breakouts. And the more you break out, the more you use them, um, things just get worse and worse. You've got to interrupt that cycle. You just have to. And the other thing to say about them is that they are incredibly difficult to budge. Um, I've tried this. You put a little bit in the back of your hands, and then you see how long before it's completely gone um, with using um, conventional hand soap. So for gentle cleansing, which is something I really strongly recommend for acne prone skin, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, so skip the long wear base, use a fine coverage, light coverage product all over, spot conceal just where you need to and skip powder. Your skin will thank you for it. So don't number three, please be careful where you get your information from and be highly skeptical of home remedies for acne. Bear in mind that acne is an inflammatory skin disorder that takes months frequently to improve and get better and it requires a similarly diligent and persistent approach with your skincare. So, I was looking on Pinterest today. I saw, in no particular order, strawberry and honey as a mask. I saw apple cider vinegar as an option. I saw oatmeal as an option. I saw papaya. I saw someone recommending grinding up orange peel into a paste and a pestle and mortar and applying that. I mean, I saw garlic being applied. Um, all of these natural things are potentially irritant, messy, and extremely unlikely to get you any significant control because to get control, even with pharmaceutical grade products that we use in the office, it takes diligent use for at least six to eight weeks. So there is no way on earth that an egg white mask is going to achieve that for you. There is nothing that's scientifically proven in there. Um, all you're doing is putting off, putting a proper plan in place, um, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's just not going to work. So skip over that information. So don't number four in my book is no physical exfoliation for acne. For, for me, it's simply not a solution. It's not something I ever recommend to my patients' management of their acne. 
The reason for this is simple. Physical exfoliation is a form of friction and in no way really helps exfoliate the bit that we want to exfoliate, which is just inside the uppermost part of the sebaceous gland, the bit that we call the pore. To get in there, you really need to be a fat soluble exfoliant ingredient like salicylic acid. Um, something that's happening on the outside, on the surface, is really not going to help on clogged pores in any meaningful way. And what we know is that friction in its own right can actually make acne worse. So we'll often see, for example, in someone who's acne prone, who wears a helmet, acne in the distribution of the helmet strap. So bottom line, friction's not your friend, go gentle. Don't number five is don't skimp on sunscreen, no matter what time of year it is. If you're on a proper acne regime, you will probably be on something that will make you more sensitive to UV light. So sunscreen is actually an integral part of your solution. The other thing to be aware of is that UV rays will make those little dark marks even darker. And that's particularly important for those of you who live at altitude or for those of you who are going skiing. So ski bunnies in particular, please take note find a good quality, non-comedogenic sunscreen that you're happy wearing, rain or shine, and embrace it. So on a final note, please put in place a good routine, be persistent, be consistent, and you will see results. And if you like this content, please hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Bye for now.